Hi guys, welcome to our daily encounter. Genesis chapter 29 perhaps has one of the most romantic stories in the book of Genesis. In Genesis chapter 29, you have uh, Jacob promising to work seven years for Laban in order to be able to marry his daughter, uh, Rachel. Uh, Jacob had fallen in love with Rachel almost immediately, and he really wanted to marry her and was willing to work seven years in order to do so. And in uh, verse 18, it says, Now Jacob loved Rachel. So he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. And it continues on. Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than to give her to another man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of his love for her. He loved Rachel so much that the seven years that he worked for Laban in order to marry her, uh, it says that it just seemed like a few days. Uh, and we can imagine what this would have been like for Jacob uh, as he's going out and watering uh, the sheep, as, they, as he's taking them out to pasture, him just thinking about Rachel, uh, perhaps being delighted at the fact that one day he would get to marry her and looking forward to being with her. And we could probably think about even on the cold days, on the rainy days, maybe in the blistering hot uh, summer days when he's working and he's sweating or he's wet or he's cold. Uh, even though in some of the most difficult uh, situations, his love for Rachel was pulling him through and really driving him forward through the years. So much so that he went through the years like it was a breeze. Uh, the love he had for Rachel was just that powerful. And as we reflect on that, we can say that love does seem to have that effect. Uh, oftentimes we can uh, endure the most difficult situations or we can maybe achieve the greatest feats when we're motivated by love. And this this can work not just in romantic love, like between a man and a woman, as we have in this story, but it can work with the love between a parent and a child, or a child toward the parent, or a love that a friend might have to another friend. Uh, love, just in general, has a, a motivating factor to it, and, and it has a, a, a way in which it allows us to do things uh, a little bit easier than we would without love. And this can also apply to our relationship with Christ. You know, oftentimes for Christ, we have to suffer. We have to suffer perhaps the loss of relationships, maybe sometimes, or uh, maybe the loss of potential gains financially uh, because of our connection to Christ. It might be that we have to uh, refrain from certain things that we want to do because of Christ, or we might have to do things that we wouldn't normally do for uh, because we're doing it for Christ. And it makes all the difference if we, we are doing those things all the while just loving Christ and doing those things out of love for Christ. If we're just doing them because uh, just purely out of obligation and just because we feel like, well, this is just something I have to do, um, even the most small task, the smallest task will seem very arduous and difficult. But when we're when our hearts are filled with the love of Christ and we're just loving Christ and we're devoted to Christ and we're tuning our hearts to Christ and we're worshiping him all day long. We wake up with him on our minds and we're thinking about him throughout the day and we're just worshiping him, praising him and being really devoted to him. Then we can overcome greater obstacles and, and, and things that would seem insurmountable to us actually might seem possible because we have the love of Christ stirring within our hearts, propelling us forward, driving us forward. And that love is causing us to then be able to do things that perhaps we otherwise wouldn't uh, be able to do or wouldn't have the strength to do. And so as we think about this connection between the love that Jacob had for Rachel and how it made seven years just seem like a few days, we can apply this to Christ as well, our love for Christ. 
uh, we can see that love does have this type of power. And so we can be motivated to first start off with cultivating a deep, rich love for Christ. And then once we have that in place, then we will be uh, in a better position, uh, at least within our hearts, to go out and do the work of Christ, to go out and do the work of the kingdom, because we'll be motivated by love, not just obligation. So these are some things we can reflect on and think about as we do our reading today. With that, guys, I do thank you for watching the video today. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.